All right. Hello. All right. Ah, we have sound. Good. All right. Hello. We are in the right position. Right. Let's get rid of. Let's delete the old one then. Hi guys, so oh God, here we go. How is everyone? Hope you can hear me. Just thought I'd come on this live thing as we got no Facebook or Instagram or anything like that going on at the moment. All down to uh, it all going wrong somewhere. Say hello in the chat. Um, I just sort up this, sort this out properly, actually. But as a first live, come say hi, photography stuff. Let me put this up. I'm not sure how I can. A bit like that would be good, wouldn't it? Hello. Need to buy a better webcam as well. So, Let's have a bit of light in the situation. That's better. Um, what can we clip this to? Say hello in the chat so I can see you guys if anybody's here. I see one person is, but I'm not sure what is what. Hello, Philip. How are you? Thank you very much. Uh, not perfect by any means, but uh, I try. Oh, Christ, now it's all going wrong. Let's try and get this. Is that better? Yeah, so I've got the new, well, a new Sony A7R4A today. I'm just waiting on the new um, RX10 Mark IV to turn up. What is going on with this stuff? Hey, look at that. It's a nice big crack at the wall there, but um, yeah, so just thought I'd come on here because as we've got no uh, Facebook or Instagram at the moment, can't put any pictures up or anything like that, so it's a bit of a funny one, isn't it, tonight? Um, how is it in Texas, anyway? I don't know how I see who pe what people are on. It's a bit, I've not used this live thing before. I can't see anybody. Um, say hello. I've got two people, so I presume I've still got Philip on here. Our participants. Ah, Philip. There we go. I can see now. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. We've had, like, well, typical English weather here today and yesterday and day before, just chucking it down with rain. Um, but other than that, it's sort of been a bit... Up and down, really, but really hot last week or the week before. Uh, you wouldn't think it was sort of September in, into October, actually. Pretty weird. I'm not sure how much of a delay is is on here, actually. It's hard hard to. Uh, in fact, I know what I can do. Bring it down more eye level. So, Philip, what camera are you using? Hello, people. I've got four people joining now, so um, yeah. So, what camera are you using, Philip? Are you an RX10 Mark IV man? I need to do a live between other photographers, really. It'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? I know a lot of other people do it already, but it's quite a good talking point. Really enjoyed your RX10 Mark IV. Oh, cool. I'm just waiting on the new one to turn up, actually. Uh, yeah, they literally, uh, Sony, the service center, literally said uh, it's got a tiny amount of water inside, so their best option is not to repair it. Because I think what they said, or that what they were saying in reality, is if they repair the lens on my RX10 Mark IV 
and then later on the main board or something dies, it's kind of like their, it's not their problem, but it's kind of like they should have fixed it or said, this is how much it's going to fix, you know, this, that and the other. So they've basically done me a camera for the price of the lens replacement, really, which is great. Not going to moan at that at all. You know, 650 quid for a brand new RX10. Not going to moan whatsoever. Say hello, people. Hello, people. Uh, five people in the room now. So feel free to come and say hi. I could do lives with other people if they wanted to at some point. If you're, you know, big into photography and you wanted to talk about what you do and what, you know, what other things like that, it's always quite interesting to hear other people's stories, you know, what they've been up to. 18 months, also have the A7R, A6600 and A7C. How do you find the A7C? I've not actually played on them. And obviously, I know it's quite small. I'm not much bigger than A6600, I suppose. How do you like it? Obviously, you've got three different beasts today, really, haven't you? You've got a full frame and APS-C and a, a one-inch sensor all in one. So it must give you quite a nice range as well. Oh, we've got a like. Feel free to comment, guys, over here. Just say hello. Six people now. Yeah, very portable, great pics. Yeah, cool. What lenses do you have to go with the... Uh, a7R and the uh, A6600, and even the A7Z, really. What do you like to use? And what do you sort of shoot? Any questions about any of the cameras? RX10 Mark IV, preferably. Obviously, that's, uh, sorry, two, 20 millimeter. That's of oh, Sony's. <laughs> he said, sorry, I can't read. Sony 20 mil. Yeah, nice. I actually, I actually bought, uh, I think it would have been an early, I think it was an A mount actually, a Sony 20 millimeter A mount. I just, I didn't get on with it. I, I always wanted a little bit wider, so I've actually gone for a 14 millimeter now, which I quite enjoy. I've actually got the A, uh, A7R4A doing some time lapse outside with the stars at the moment. Just left it going. For about another five minutes or so it should be finished its uh duration so i'll have to run and get that in a sec anybody else want to say hello philip's the main man at the moment how's the sound because i've got these sony um wireless things are pretty cool peter hi peter I have, uh, I have the Sigma 40 mil super. I've actually seen that. That's actually quite a nice little lens, isn't it? It's one. Of, it's, there's so much out there nowadays. No, <laughs> the um, the RX10 that hasn't RX10 Mark IV hasn't arrived yet. No, I'm still waiting. So yeah, unfortunately, I've got to wait for that. Sound is okay. Cool. I did a, a test run a minute ago. I need to delete that video, but. The webcam, this old webcam here I'm using, which is pretty rubbish. Uh, it sound like the uh, microphone was knackered on it. Not really sure. Sound is good. Okay. Good, good. Yeah, it's totally wireless. These are about 200 quid. Uh, I can't remember what the model number is of them. Um, I've got it plugged in the wireless part. <laughs> Took mine to work today. Didn't get much work done. Brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's the best way, isn't it? You know, if it's good weather or you can get away with taking some pictures, it's always good. That's what we need. That's what we're there for. So, what sort of? Uh, tell me what you what you photograph. You know, just generally everybody. Um, obviously, I'm a bit of an all rounder. I've always done a bit of everything. So, obviously, portraiture, landscapes. I see. Managed to get the Neo Two work to work with my Nissan. Oh, that's cool. Is Facebook down you, you, or you can't access it locally? It seems to be down. Well, it's, it's a big thing on the news at the moment. It's still not doing anything. Well, it wasn't. Um, I might be back now. Possibly. I'll be back in. 
Oh, it's literally live. It's come back now. So what's Instagram doing? We back with that as well. Couldn't refresh Instagram. Uh, when does the camera come back? Well, uh, hi, Ron. Uh, the camera has actually been basically binned now, the RX-10. They're basically sending me a new one. Uh, basically, they um, basically said there was a tiny, tiny, it was amazing, really, considering I've thrashed it in all weathers possibly. It's been soaked so many times. They said literally one to two droplets of water had managed to get in on the back of the main board or something. Uh, literally tiny amount onto one of the ribbon uh, plugs. And it has uh, basically, it's not done anything. It's literally the, the camera was working fine. But they, what they said is they don't want to repair it, as in put the new, a new lens on the RX-10 Mark IV, and then uh, basically in a month or two months or something, it suddenly dies because of the, that main board. So they've basically offered me a new one for the same price as a, the lens replacement, so which is great. I'm well happy with that. Uh, nature vegetables, fruit, plus lots of typhoons. Typhoons are cool. Lancaster, Spitfires. Oh, sweet. I'll try and keep up with this because it's starting to get busy now. <laughs> and we've got nine people in there, but... Uh, oh, yeah, DNS wasn't working for Facebook. Yeah, it also had an impact on uh, WhatsApp and Instagram. Good response from Sony. Yeah, I was well pleased. Uh, <laughs> it's not your fault. Um, Peter, mainly bird, use Olympus EM1. I've heard the, it. Well, actually, I think I know if someone's got an EM1, uh, that or the RX10 Mark IV. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what camera we choose nowadays, does it? They're literally amazing. doesn't matter which make we use it's all about learning what they do and how they do it and then you obviously can get the most from them can't you um a lot of people don't get the rx10 well they go oh when it's sensor it must be rubbish and you're like yeah it's not that at all you know uh, as soon as i get it though i'm going to be out doing some because it's autumn here now in, in the uk i'll be out doing some low light stuff with it no yeah no bad camera anymore at all you're right absolutely Really, really good. Um, does anybody use a webcam? Because I need to buy a decent one. I mean, I know I could plug the cameras in and utilize them properly, but I think I might just stick with a decent quality uh, webcam. If the Mark V comes out now, what would you do? Sell the RX10 Mark IV <laughs> and order a Mark V. Um, it's going to, obviously, I mean, the improvements that are going to happen are, you know, there's so much tech now. We've jumped, I mean, four years, or even five years, really, if you think about it. The RX-10 Mark IV must have been designed five years ago. Uh, you know, obviously, with limited technology back then. You know, I know it's only five years, but, you know, we've now got super fast express, um, express cards and all that sort of stuff, haven't we? And the memory's a lot faster. The burst rates and all this sort of stuff now. And obviously, they can shoot up to 30 frames per second, like on the A1, for example. You know, so it's... It, yeah, it's kind of never ending. Obviously, we want the bigger battery, don't we? As well, because the old little batteries don't last all that long. Not this really a problem swapping a battery. Never really bothered me. Coupling in the pocket, no real drama. But you know, they could easily upgrade it. Any rumors about that? No. Literally, I mean, what was it last? Oh, there we go. Last year, I think, or beginning of last year, there was a rumor, wasn't there, of the um, RX10 Mark V coming. And then, or the, was it end of last the year before? Might be an end of 2019 that they basically just released another uh, RX100. It was like, really? Not, not that there's been enough of them already. Yeah, as soon as I get the brand new RX10, they'll, they'll release it, won't they? <laughs> uh, it'll happen as there's no competition. That's the thing, you know, but there's enough people using the RX10s now that, you know, surely... The comp not, not necessarily competition, but it's more the fact that keeping your customers happy, you know. Um, and Sony do look at my videos now because I hassle them so much about the problem with the uh, 200 to 600 lens with the A7R4 that the um, they did start to look. So they might, you know, the fact they might have noticed that the RX10 videos are well hit, you know. So and the information that you guys have commented on those are the videos, um, you know. It's going to be, you know, hopefully a, a release of some sort. But it's a bit like, I've said it loads of times before, it's a bit like the Sony A7S II. 
they waited five years before they released the A7S III. So yeah, we already know the RX10 is well capable, and it's not exactly slow, is it? You know, it still keeps up very well with all the other tech today. So, you know, maybe they might they might wait till July next year. Nothing will come before Christmas anyway. Uh, I would like to sell. Of course, they would. Yeah, I think also though they could actually make a camera that is so so good that. I think they might be worried that they might put a lot of other cameras out of sale, if you know what I mean. You know, if the RX10, I mean, for me personally, the RX10 Mark IV and my A7R4, or any, if you had a second camera, it doesn't matter what, you, what you've what you decided to have, it's such a good companion to take with you. I mean, sometimes I just don't want to take my bag with me or anything like that. You know, I just want to take a camera with me with massive range, and it's perfect for that sort of stuff. And it's tons better than obviously a mobile phone. Obviously, mobile phone cameras are brilliant anyway today, aren't they? Uh, but they are still very limited. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I use mine. I've used it professionally. I've got some stuff with it that, you know, no other camera can do. I mean, shooting a thousand frames per second, watching a printer print ink was nuts. Obviously, the quality wasn't hugely brilliant, but I did upscale it again and sharpen it and stuff like that. And it was actually quite cool. Uh, that was used in a, a printer's. Um, website so you know it just shows you can use and plus those other photos and stuff I've got um, like the Spitfire shot of mine I don't know if anybody's seen it where the Spitfire looks really close um, and I was actually flying down the runway at 300 knots and I've basically got every single shot from you know sort of 10 seconds before it was really really cool yeah I think um I think it was definitely be a good move. I mean, for me, I think better slow motion. I absolutely adore slow motion. I think slow motion videography is absolutely insane. I don't know if anybody's seen the slow mo guys. Depends on what you watch, really. But the slow mo guys um, do some amazing uh, slow motion video. Plus, there's other guys out there who do it as well. You know, and it's just nuts to see. And the fact that we can, I know we can only do a thousand frames per second, but it's pretty cool that we can do that at 600 mil f4. Um, especially if you put it in full manual mode, you've got full control over it as well. So it's really, really good. It's just a shame it's not very high resolution. And it's upscale. So that, that kind of sucks in some respects. So 500 frames per second is pretty good. And if you crank up the co uh, contrast a little bit and add a little bit of sharpening, it, it, it looks pretty good, to be fair. Um, but you've got to have tons of light. So obviously at high, uh, high frame rates, you need loads of light. In Suffolk, we get Spitfires going over quite a bit. <laughs> you, don't ever, all right, you don't ever have the camera when it happens. See, we've got Beachy Head, so I'm, I'm not far from Eastbourne, and uh, I go up to the Beachy Head quite a bit, and it's beautiful up there. I love it. And it's a big open space, and it's just kind of relaxing, if anything. Sadly, it's one of the biggest um, suicide spots in the country, but at the same time, it's just a stunning rolling hills with white cliffs and um, a couple of lighthouses and whatever and they're always flying spitfires up there i mean i think the last four times i went which were random days there was a spitfire um and then when i went over to dover and um, to the dover castle and around that area the spitfires were flying around as well and they, they fly from headcorn or i think shoreham is where they fly from tell something about yourself if you want uh <laughs> um well, actually a chef um so i've all I, I basically have done it for years um the photography i started when i was about 12 and basically sold a photograph back in the days of film um which bought me my first camera which actually i have got hang on uh which is now on a stand because it's dead Sadly, um, but ugh. there we go. Pentax ME Super. That was my first camera, and um, some of the shots I've taken with it, I, I absolutely still love today, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, no. So I never went full time with it. I, I was going to go full time with the uh, the photography, and decided actually. I'd rather 
do it because I love it. I've done many jobs over the years. I've done, I've been flown to America to do weddings. I've been all over the place doing bits and pieces for companies and people and all that sort of stuff. So working for the, uh, the Olympics on the BBC and, uh, and things like that. Loads of hotel contracts, obviously because of my background, um, Crown Plaza and uh, things like that. So I've done plenty of things like that before, which is great. Um, but you also get to know that a lot of customers or clients that you're working for are a bunch of idiots, <laughs> um, which I think is normal in the real world. And I didn't, what I didn't want to do is I thought if I go full time, I will lose the love of it and I don't want that. So I now pick and choose what I want to do. So if someone phones me up or sends me an email, your first admit um, object system. Oh, sweet. That's cool. Um, yeah, so basically I would, I now pick and choose what I want to do. I charge what I want. You know, if I know it's a small company, like a small business, and after COVID and everything like that, I've done a few bits and pieces for free just to help people. That's cool. Chaz, are you from Eastbourne? Do you actually live in Eastbourne? Yeah, that's the trouble. You, I mean, I've done things before. You just think basically it's just bugger off kind of thing. You know, some, sometimes you just get a customer or client that is just a nightmare you know you ask for this that, and the other um yeah absolute nightmare um i've worked with lots of lovely people loads of lovely people and you know my work i'm, I'm far from the perfect photographer i've never said that at all you know i'm i learn something new every day um you know and you know i think being humble towards people and i love helping people you know i'm obviously i'm I, I still learn things every day, but most of my knowledge has come from the film area and then obviously into digital. So I still do things. Oh, Hamden Park. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to meet up sometime. Go for a wander. Um, Chaz, are you in my Facebook group? I can never remember. I've got not that many people, but enough to. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's helping people out and things, teaching people. I, I did over. Um, lockdown when we were obviously sat at home or out walking and stuff like that a lot i did a few lessons over online which was quite fun yeah exactly and i think i'm very lucky that i didn't go full time uh because of lockdown and everything like that i think i would have either i mean a lot of companies now have gone bust or are struggling big time so i was lucky to be in a position where um you know, I, I was still okay, which is good. I think, you know, as a, if you were small businesses, it must have been hard, especially all over the world, you know. Um, guys, I'm just going to be two seconds. I'm going to grab the, um, the A7R4 that's sticking out the window at the minute. So I'll be two seconds. Sorry. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sue. Have a good night. Um, yes, well, I don't drive, so I need to arrange a meet somewhere. That's why I always pick you up. No drama. Um, yeah, so today I picked up the, well, got delivered, the A7R4A. So I've just done some, <laughs> typical, some long exposures. I don't know if you're going to see this because the quality won't be that great. But some uh, low light stuff quite easily. But yeah, literally, I'm just flicking through them and the cloud cover comes and goes. So it's just a bit of experimentation, really. But uh, sorry, I'll just read it back a sec. Did a couple of weddings 
that was enough yeah um weddings i don't mind doing it if it's friends generally i have done it i've done probably 30 i suppose over the years uh, like i say flown to america which was fun a three-week holiday that was hi mark Bad news where Facebook's working here. Well, we can stay here for a while, I don't mind. But I'll have to get... Shall I do this, Mick, more often? Do we want to talk about stuff like this? Yeah, it is back up and running, isn't it? What about Instagram, though? I still couldn't refresh. It's still saying on Instagram. Um, I don't really care, anyway. But I was going to upload some new photos. We shall see. Uh, where have we got to? Uh... Yeah, so, okay. Uh, any questions about anything else? What's that? Yes, these are great. Better than Facebook nonsense. <laughs> we'll have to, I'll have to get another photographer. There was my friend Robert, who's another photographer in London. Really nice guy. Uh, we were going to start some live broadcasts, you know, like this and have a chat. Um, obviously, got David Ostler and a few other people who do similar sort of things. I just thought night time, I'm always up late. I mean, it's, 11.30 at the moment. But I'm always up late anyway, so it could be quite a good, fun evening. Obviously, from around the world, I know I've got a few people in America who follow me and a few other places as well. Um, you know. So, yeah. So, A7R4A um, with the 50mm F1.4 Sigma. I actually just, I just had a random piece of neoprene left over from one of my lenses. So I just slid, slid it on, but it's actually really nice. I thought for winter, it's going to keep it keep it slightly warmer. Metal lenses and stuff are quite cold when you're outside for a few hours in the dark. Um, but I say, feel free to ask questions, anything about the RX10 Mark IV or any of the Sony cameras, really, if you need any advice or help on things. Yeah, Facebook nonsense. <laughs> it's just political crap nowadays, <laughs> um, which is not good. Like I say, anybody use webcams at all much? Is there a good one to go for that's not mega money? I mean, I can use, obviously, the Sonys, but if I'm trying to use utilise um, the cameras and stuff at the same time, it's a bit difficult. Am I up? No, that's it. That's not bad, though. I know we only had eight, pe eight or nine people in here. Not too bad at all. Get typing, everyone. Doesn't matter what you ask. Do you want to know anything else? Or uh, I'd like to see a video on how you shoot low light sometime. So there is a video actually with uh, what is it called? Um, there is one. I mean, I'll, I, when I get the new RX10 Mark IV, I'm going to try and get that because a few people ask me what's it like in low light if you really push it. Um, it's actually not too bad, um, but you know it's. What have we got? I think it was with the A7R3. If you go on my channel and search for uh, nighttime photography on the Sony A7R3 or the A7R3 low light for photo and video test, Samyang 35mm f1.4, uh, or astrophotography. There's a few there I've done. The high ISOs with the A7R4, things like that, which, you know, it's it's all fun. Dark skies at Bodium Castle, shooting in the A7R3 a couple of years ago. Um, but I can, I can, I could do, I need, problem is I'm a one man band half the time. Um, Oh, you lost Facebook in New Zealand as well. I guess they didn't pay the electricity bill or something. <laughs> I, I, do you know what? I, uh, thanks, Ron. Um, sorry, Alan. Um, yeah, no. Um, the R RX 10 Mark V, uh, it just went off the radar about a year or so ago. And it's, they just released another RX 10 100, didn't they, at the time? It was all rumours going, yeah, it's going to be the RX-10 Mark V, and then just went, nah, just have another RX-100. 
but uh yeah and then they obviously had the um the vlogging cameras they released as well uh how about the gas stations um yeah i mean i filled my car a week or so ago i went down to dorset i've got a cool photo shoot uh video coming actually down in dorset from last week um yes yeah, so i've got i've got petrol uh, but people were panic buying as they do um thanks ron um yeah, I'd like to keep it real. I don't like all this fake... I know I, know I um and I um a bit and all this sort of stuff, um, which loads of people have said, oh, you should cut out the ums and the ums. I'm like, well, sorry, I'm just saying it as I see it because what I actually do, how I do the videos is when I edit, I basically pick my clips that I've used. I start with them and then obviously the photographs I've actually edited and saved, I then plonk them in. And then a lot of the time I'll do a voiceover and I'll just talk as, as the picture comes up on the timeline, as I'm running through it, I'll then talk about it. Um, and then I just go, um, because I'm thinking at the time, what, what's going on? And I'm not, I'm not a, um, I'm not particularly natural on camera and things like that. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, what's he say? Just walk on. Yeah. I just like to keep it real so people can actually see the real world of what's actually happening. I know I should probably video more cause I actually miss out you know, a lot, a lot of stuff really. And the problem as well is I hate cutting the videos too much, even though you have to, because otherwise they, they get longer and longer and then people get bored because, you know, a bit like the video I put up yesterday uh, up on Beachy Head or whatever and with the car and then the Spitfires and, and all that, it was, it was interesting, but I had to cut out probably 50 or 60% of the video because otherwise it would have been, uh, you know, would have been um, too long and people just get bored. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to change. I, I am me at the end of the day. And I started the YouTube channel generally just because I thought, you know what, it's nothing to do with money. And I earn a little bit of money now. It's not a huge amount, but it covers my Photoshop, my home internet bills and and uh, phone bill and stuff like that every month, which is great, you know, um, which is which is really cool. But you know, one day I might get hit big time and earn some decent money from it. Yeah, I mean, Jared Poland's quite good, but they're all scripted. They spend so much time scripting everything, but then it's pretty much their full time job, isn't it? And I don't have a huge amount of time. Just back from says Sam Sisters Camera Club, where we had a talk by Alex Mother. It shoots by moonlight. It was really interesting. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. Be interested to see some of your pictures. Got the Z1000 where the first came out. It's still going strong after years of hard use. Well, would love the autofocus feature of the RX 4 but I have to wait till the Panasonic crashes. <laughs> you never know, Panasonic might bring something else out anyway. Uh, it, it probably is. It's like everyone moans about the Sony menus. But it's like everything, you know, the more you use something, the easier it becomes. And with, like, for example, the uh, your menus in the Sonys, you've got your star menu. So I've literally got in there format and the um, time lapse in there. I don't know if you can see that, but basically I've got those two things there. And obviously you can go through your menus. And also the other thing as well, which is all on all the Sonys, if it will actually... Now, let's get rid of that. There you go. Your FN menu. It's absolutely amazing. Put all the stuff in there you need, and then occasionally, I mean, most of the time, if I ever go into the deep menus, it's literally just for um, formatting my card. I very rarely do anything else in there because you set it up so well, and also your custom buttons. That's where the RX10 Mark IV is a little bit old. And you can't customize quite enough buttons. There's a couple of buttons it could have done with. What's it say? Yeah, good night, Mr. Oh, I saw you, Mr. August. <laughs> uh, yeah, have, uh, have a good one. Even though it's in back, it's back in good shape. If one was like if one point two is too expensive. Yeah, I looked at it and it was quite funny because I know I. Uh, I put it up as it's not not clickbait, but at the end of the day, I thought I had looked, and actually, I have I have tried out a, a fifty mil uh, G Master, and it was lovely. 
But when you look at the price of it, you think that was more expensive than my 135G Master. And for 50 millimeters, I don't use very often at all. But this one here, this uh, Sigma, was at 399 and used in, in nine, in, you know, like nine plus condition. Oh, yeah. No, it's. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. What do you think of the. I've actually um, have used Lumina. In fact, I have. If I still got it on here. I did have a copy. I got sent a copy to try out, but I never did much with it. Um, Luminar's all right. Oh, this thing's going on. Luminar's okay, but it's not. It's not Photoshop. It's it's a lot of um, like presets, and oh, you can add stuff in really easily, and you can change the skies. But with Photoshop, obviously, you can uh, you know do a lot more. Uh, with my editing style, I basically just go in, I adjust to make sure the levels are as I want them to be very rarely sharpen anything and then uh and then just save so most of my photos you ever see i mean a lot of the photos you see in the videos i haven't even done anything to them because i want to keep them uh, as realistic as possible i may have adjusted a couple of little bits but i never never did too much uh you're thinking of upgrading from the a7 II to the a7r3 get the a7r3a with a new screen on the back so the a7r3a has got the up, uprated rear screen, so is this the A7R4A. Um, and I've noticed today, utilising this new camera, that it's definitely a little bit quicker on the autofocus, a bit more snappy. I am shooting raw, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if I'm shooting raw, I basically just open the open the image and I will just adjust my levels a little bit and then save. Job done. Unless it's like portraiture or something like that, and they'll, they'll, I'll obviously maybe touch up the skin a little bit here or there. But generally, actually, in the real world, probably thirty seconds per photo. You know, on even on portraiture, maybe five seconds on a on a normal photo, like a landscape or something. We've got six people. Um, yeah, it's just. Yeah, I mean, I try and. With all the fil the one thing that really used to wind me up was all the filters on Instagram, on Snapchat, on TikTok, and all the things like that that makes everyone's skin go super soft and all this crap on there that it's just made made the world such a fake place. Uh, you know, having keeping my channel as real as possible, it, it, you know, with as little editing as possible, kind of gives everyone the real. Um, <laughs> um, you know, trying to keep everything as realistic as possible. Because at the end of the day, when we look at each other in the real world, that's what I like to portray. Uh, the A1, no. That was a long, hard decision, actually. And hence why I've got a new A7R4A. Uh, this was 2,200 quid, absolute bargain. So, um, yeah, the A1 is amazing. And even though I shoot a lot of different things, Day one is well, I mean, to rest summer street probably will be interesting, yeah. Okay, I shall get out there and see what I can do. The yeah, the A1 is an absolute beast, but I personally think it's overpriced by about a thousand quid. I know you can now buy it for about five thousand four hundred, uh, which is a bit more realistic, but at the end of the day, shooting side by side with an A7R4, yeah, the autofocus system is nuts and it is super fast. And having 30 frames per second, but I've been used to 24 frames per second with the RX10. So that's that's nothing new to me, the speed of that. But the autofocus was. But 95% of the time, totally adequate. Don't miss much. Um, and to be honest, looking at the photos side by side as well, having the extra, re extra resolution on the A7R4 was actually a little bit sharper. Thoughts on the new Canon cameras? I don't follow them at all, and it sounds pretty bad, but even though I'm not a fanboy of anything, you know, really, obviously I love Sony and I've got used to using it, but I'm not that sort of stuck up enough to go, 
you know, you should just buy Sony, you should buy Sony, you know, they're the best in the world, because they're not, you know, everybody's, they're all within each other's reach, aren't they? Um, you know, obviously Sony have done very well for themselves, and they did push the mirrorless market. Um, but I have got a couple of friends who have got a couple of the new mirrorless uh, cannons, uh, which are amazing, I must say. But the problem is, once you're with a company, like Sony, for example, and you've got all the lenses that fit. It's an expensive swap, isn't it? It is definitely an expensive swap. Uh, apparently, Instagram is back. My friend Luke's just popped in. Um, thoughts on you? Yeah, so the Canon... Canon cameras, yeah, I mean, they're all going to be amazing and probably possibly even better than some of the Sonys. You know, everyone is, is used to rave about the colours of uh, Canon. And I have used Canon DSLRs before as well. So, yeah, it's just interesting, you know, what other people do. But at the end of the day, I we did actually, the friend of mine, Ben, he, he was a, a Canon DSLR lover. And I gave him my Sony A7R three when I had it for the day. And I had his Canon... Um, DSLR and going back to a you know a proper viewfinder as such was interesting he was blown away by how fast and how quickly you could get the work done as such using the mirrorless cameras with the you know the instant preview as such or the live preview through the viewfinder and how how you could actually you know really get on with it Next car, uh, I don't know. Um, problem with the RTZ, everyone slags it off. Everyone hates it. Um, they go, oh, it's not a, it's not an Audi TT. Well, it's trying to be an Audi TT. If anybody's driven an Audi TT, um, even the, I mean, the, the TT RS is is obviously a very very good car, but the other Audi TTs are a little bit dull, and they're yeah, they're very well refined and all this that and the other. The RTZ is quite raw. You know, it's quite fun. Um, but I've just had it remapped, so it's like a new car again. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, it's 10 years old, so you know, absolutely love it. It's such a fun machine to drive. Oh, cheers, Joseph. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's different. I mean, a lot of people don't know what it is because it's old enough now, it's kind of been forgotten, so that's really funny. But it gets admiring glances, people stand around it sometimes. I've come back to it, and there's been five or six people either looking at it or taking a photograph of it. It's almost like, you know, I might as well not have a Lamborghini, you know. <laughs> it's It's got that much sort of uh, shape to it and everything that it's, it makes people interested, which is good. And it looks always it's quite good in photos and things. Um, and it's white, so it sticks out like a sore thumb. But it's been ceramic coated from day one, so there's no rust on it or anything. And we did reseal the underneath of the car a uh, couple of months ago. So basically it's all fresh underneath. So there won't be any rust. Um, yeah, so um, what else have we got? Lenses. So what's everyone's favourite lenses to use? You know, depending on what you do, obviously. Um, obviously, I'm now using the 100 or 400, which is somewhere. Um, what's this? Oh, yeah, the 35 to 150 Tamron. That looks like a really good lens, especially if you're like a wedding photographer. That's going to be a game changer because the fact that the old days you'd have, you know, have one camera with a 24 to 70, and then another camera with 70 to 200 f2.8. The fact you can go back to 35, which is a really usable, uh, you know, portrait wide angle, is that's a game changer, isn't it? Really, really nice sort of range as well. And you don't really need 200. I mean, do you know, when I'm shooting with the 135 G Master, I've got so much resolution, especially with this, you know, you can crop in up to 200 quite easily anyway, and you wouldn't even notice. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a bit of kit, really. And even though it's quite a bit of money, uh, I love the 1635 f2.8, but I also have the 24GM, 50GM, and the 90G. I had the 90G macro. Um, the only thing I found, I mean, it's a great lens. I just didn't use it enough. Um, so yeah, I kind of got rid of that. I actually sold it for more than I paid for it, which was good, because they're quite sought after. 24GM, I have used one, and obviously I said I have used the 50GM briefly uh, wasn't my camera though it was just on it was just something i met who had it and uh, it was just lovely it was really nice 
Um, but like I say, how do you, how did you think the price? You, Joseph, do you think the price for the fifty GM is too much money? Because it's not cheap, is it? It's quite expensive. You know, if it was about the same price as the twenty four millimeter, I think it would be a bit more um, reasonable. I think it's quite expensive because the technology that and the the design in it to make it that small because it's got the in, it's got the in well I don't know what you call it is it convex whichever whichever way it is it's basically and the the lens goes the other way doesn't it? it goes inwards on the front element like a little dish good for catching raindrops if you're thirsty I was wondering if Luke's going to join us. He hasn't looked. I think he's uh, probably going to sleep. It was funny because I think um, because what's that? Sorry, they have an old Kong fifty-seven mil f one point two. Really? They do an f one point two. Really? I've never seen that. Be right back googling that now. Too much. I mean, I use just the price of the F fifty F one two. I think it's because it's new tech. That's the trouble. Blimey. Well, there's one on eBay for sale, an MC Rocknor Minolta 50, oh, 58 mil F1.2, £369. The FD was 135 FT. I actually had um, Con oh, Conica. Oh, the old Conica one. Um, yeah, this is an old lens as well, actually. I don't know. I should not look at eBay or anything like that because I, I ended up spending money. Pay four sixty four. Oh, okay, so fair enough. That's a fair play. And uh, don't you don't you find that the I shouldn't point. <laughs> uh, don't you find that the old lenses really give a lovely look? They're slightly different to the modern ones because they're not quite as highly polished glass or you know anything like that. So they do give a nicer nicer look in some effects. Can the F fifty one two was about thousand. It's like 3,000. Yeah, but it's the modern day motor speeds and stuff like that are much, much greater. I have used a 50 mil F1.2 on a Canon before, actually. And we actually put it on my A7R2 with an adapter. As did I, I did a 600 mil F4 on the A7R2 uh, with a friend of mine. And that was quite interesting a few years ago now. Um, but yeah, uh, what's it say? Dreamy, not, it's just sharp like you. Yeah, that's the thing. I think everyone's gone a bit crazy on how sharp stuff needs to be. Um, and then they moan that, you know, a lot of people don't quite get the aperture, you know, the correct aperture in shots. You know, just because it can shoot F1.2 doesn't mean you shoot F1.2 all the time. I know you can, but, you know, stopping down your lens to get enough depth into your picture is quite important, especially to make a decent shot where you see it all of the time where people don't utilize those apertures. You know, obviously, the closer you get, the shallower it becomes. So, you know, I was shooting at it was like F13 earlier with the 100 to 400, trying to get a bug, and uh, it was a bee and a hoverfly and stuff, and it still wasn't quite enough. I was quite close. And that, that's at 400 millimeters. But yeah, the mirrorless, mirrorless stuff is expensive. But then, you know, high end pro stuff, build quality has gone up. With all these extra water seal, seal all, anti, what do you call it, weather sealing, and like the one three five G Master, it's got four super fast motors in it. Um, you know, so it can really, really push itself. And you know, I think it's worth every penny. The one three five. I actually had a one three five Sony Zeiss uh, lens f one point eight. That was beautiful, but it was screw drive, the old screw drive autofocus. So it was a little bit noisy, but that, that produced some beautiful photos. And then I sold it for 300 pounds more. I basically started on Sony when they had just, well, actually I started on Konica Minolta as Sony were buying them. 
buying yeah, buying them out. So I managed to buy some really good, cheap priced lenses and stuff because no one wanted them at the time because Nikon and Canon were so busy with, you know, selling all their stuff. Konica and Ultra was quite small. Then into Sony were like, oh, it's the new boys. They're going to be crap. And I managed to get some really good deals. And then, like I say, I sold my, I think I paid £650 for a, a mint uh zeiss 135 sony uh, or sony a mount or chronic Ultra a mount and i literally sold it for a grand <laughs> which was cool and when i first moved to sony i had the camera 1635 used by a metabones adapter yeah the metabones adapters work quite well and the um, mc11 really that's strange that's bizarre uh yeah street done well, i don't know how why that would happen uh really want the rx10 mark 5 to come out would be my best everyday camera it's a bit like the rx10 now the rx10 mark 4 now is still absolutely immense it's such a good camera such a good camera it's yeah not perfect we know that um the, my biggest uh, it's not to do with high uh, high isos or anything like that because to be honest with the rx10 because you've got such a fast um, zoom rate, uh, like a big zoom, obviously you've got f2.4 to f4 you know, there's plenty of light getting into getting in most of the time which is which is great, but the most annoying thing I find with the RX10 is that in fact you can't zoom in and out whilst taking photos whilst you're auto-focusing that's my biggest bug there, I wish they'd go back to a non-electronic zoom and um, go back to more of a manual, I used to have an f8128 back, I think it was 2004 um, Brilliant little camera that was. Obviously, quality wasn't amazing, but the way it worked and the fact you could tw you could actually twist the body up rather than having the screen flap uh, rotating, the whole body rotated. That was quite a cool camera. Um, but yeah, the RX, I mean, the RX10 Mark V, if and when it comes, I think will be the best camera out there for just everything generally. Have you used a Sigma 70 more macro? No. I was thinking about buying one because I had a one. Basically, I had a, I had a 105 macro on A mount, which I adapted for ages, and then a used 90 um, mil macro appeared, the Sony one, at a good price. So I grabbed that and thought about going for the 105, the newer Sigma one. The 70, I always find you're not quite close enough. The 105s and above, so 105, 150, uh, allows you to stand back from your subject quite nicely, especially bugs and stuff. So the one you don't get your shadows on, and one you don't spook them. So the 70, 50s and 70s are a little bit too, um, too close, really, which is a shame. But yeah, I mean they're smaller and cheaper. But I, I think the Sigma uh, 70 mil is very, very good. Just not my. I wouldn't go for it just because you'll end up being a lot closer to your subject, that's all. Because obviously your aspect ratio is the same. No aspect ratio, your um, magnification, one-to-one. -one. Uh, thoughts of him, isn't it? A7 IV, yeah. Um, A7 III obviously plagued with a load of different shutters that some obviously have gone wrong. Yeah, you're afraid of shutter failure. I've had two, I've had two shutter failures over the years. And one was my A7R2, and that's when I dropped it down a big rubble pile and I tripped over a barbed wire fence. It was basically a piece of barbed wire in the grass and I couldn't see it. And the rest of the fence had sort of fallen down. I tripped on it and I had my uh, neck strap over. And as I fell, my neck strap actually came over my head and the camera just went. Um, and it bounced down this sort of 20 foot high rubble pile. With a flash gun on top as well, and it never touched the flash. It was amazing. It must have just been rolling and rolling and rolling, um, but missed it completely. Snapped the lens off, which actually too it used to be an adapted um, 50 mil art. And I smacked. Oh, was it? No, no, it was actually one of these when they first came out. So yeah, no, it wasn't adapted. It was full on. But anyway, it snapped off the mount, which they're designed to do, um, and then about. I put a new new lens on, grabbed another lens from the bag, got the actual lens mount off, checked everything and it was fine, put a new lens on and carried on shooting. 
uh, I think anywhere between three and five months later, I was just turned the camera on, did a few shots, and it spewed its whole shutter mechanism out the front. Um, so that had to have a new, which I'm guaranteed that's what it was. Um, but yeah, um, that was 126 quid, if I remember rightly. Have it replaced. Um, and 80 pounds to have the uh, Sigma 50mm lens rebuilt, which I didn't think was bad, actually. Um, and then another one. What was the other one that went? Ah, my A99 shutter mechanism failed. Um, but my RX10, which obviously that's got a leaf shutter anyway, that is obviously now gone, and I'm waiting for my new one. But that had actually done 340 something thousand shots um, with no drama. Obviously, a lot of the time it's using just the sensor. Uh, is the Sony A7R3 still worth buying second hand today? Picture quality okay compared to the picture quality on the A7R3 is stunning. The A7R2 42 megapixel sensor, the original one, that sensor is an absolute dream sensor. It's absolutely stunning. It mega sharp, beautiful shots coming off it. And all they did with that, with the A7R3, was tweak that sensor. So they basically um, obviously remapped it or something. They did a bit of new uh, firmware on it and obviously did something to it to make it slightly cleaner um, and just made it better. So that that A7R3 sensor is actually is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant camera. Um, I love the high-resolution ones because you can crop in. I know we've got upscaling software nowadays where you can do obviously like super resolution on Adobe and stuff like that. But there's nothing better than actually having the real the real pixels in the in the first place. So having the crop mode, one for video, which is great. So you can go super 35 and then crop in on video. So as you, well, you can zoom in again, uh, which I utilize on the A7R4 all the time. It's absolutely brilliant. With the A7R3, I actually kind of missed that camera. You know, it was really, really nice. I mean... Quality wise, I don't think you could really tell the difference. It's a bit like have you seen the um the video the other day that came on that basically all the photographers, include Jared Polo and all that lot, were trying to work out which shot was a Canon and which one was a Sony. Yeah, larger battery on the R3 compared to the R yeah, definitely. Well worth it. Yeah, one of these batteries goes all day. Brilliant, these are. Um well, well worth the upgrade just on the battery, really. Also, the EVF is a lot better than the um, A7 III, noticeably clearer, higher resolution. And then, obviously, on the A7R4, it's even higher. And then, obviously, you get to the A1, it's even higher than that, which is nuts. I never thought I would need a... I never thought I would want... Actually, on the A7R3, I thought, it's a beautiful EVF. I never thought I'd want anything more. And, obviously, they upped, upped it on the A7R4, and then even more on the A1. But yeah, the, the new battery is a major up, update. Um, shooting, I mean, I shot, I did a 30, was it a 30th birthday? 30th birthday? And I shot a couple of thousand shots that evening. And I let the battery, I had another battery with me anyway, but I let the battery run down till it went to zero. And then I went for another 15, 20 minutes, it flashing dead, like, you know, empty, of, until it eventually um, exhausted itself. So yeah, that bigger battery does just goes and goes and goes. I do put my cameras into airplane mode though, and also one of the biggest biggest things you can do um, to save your batteries, as well as uh, anything else, is if I can find it, is to set your in the setup area, like the toolbox. Is is that I don't know if that's actually backwards or not. If you're looking at it the same as me, I don't know. Um, it doesn't show anyway because this thing's rubbish. But if you go into your toolbox on pretty much all of the cameras and go to monitor brightness and viewfinder brightness, both change them both to manual and leave them at zero. And then you get more of an accurate color and brightness because nothing ever changes. And if a lot of people have said to me, when they put it into video mode, suddenly their screen dims and it's really annoying. But you need to um, basically set the screens to manual and it won't do it anymore. So it makes a huge difference. Um, the difference between the A7R3 quality-wise and the A7R4 is the A7R4 
has this magical look. Like we can't, we still can't work out what it is, but I think it's literally just the massive resolution. It just, it's just a little bit sharper, a little bit more detail. And it just really shines. A seven R three isn't far behind at all, but compared to the sort of twenty four megapixel cameras out there, it's it's a different world. Um, but everyone, everyone to their own, you know, kind of thing. It's, uh, you know, it's what you need and what you don't need. I mean, I've done loads of large scale prints, like huge scale prints before um, for jobs and things like that. So, you know, up to five meter uh, prints. So, you know, at full resolution as well, which is great. And it's quite interesting. So I do want to do at some point, how big can we print, like really print from the RX-10 Mark IV? And also how, how big can we go on the A7R4 in the real world, especially using the 240 megapixel pixel shift? Uh, Mark's, Mark's just followed me. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things out there. Thoughts on the HDR in camera versus the, on the cell phone? Well, there's no HDR in the Sony stuff, is there? I don't know what I know of, unless you unless you're um, on the A7S3. Does that have it? I don't know. Video wise, I'm not hugely queued up on it. Really. Um, I generally shoot 4K with the A7R4 or 100 frames per second HD. Um, problem with mobile phones is their sensors are tiny. They've got so much bandwidth to play with with the data coming off them. They can easily do it. But once you get to the bigger sensors, it takes so much more power to actually deal with stuff like that. Um, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, HDR is quite cool to have. Obviously, it gives you a really nice exposure. Um, but I have noticed before with the um oh sorry oh in stills yeah well it's easy to do that um but i generally do it yeah you can do it in bracketing um i'm sorry i was thinking hdr video um you can literally do that so i also think a dj mini drone i saw a friend has i'm easy to fly he's kind of thinking one um so my new video that's coming soon if i've actually edited it from down in dorset we actually put another drone up and actually was the mini 2 flying in quite high winds as well i was a, it wasn't even mine i was a little scared for it to be fair but it, it did really well um i had if you've looked at some other videos i've had the um, air 2 which was amazing but because it's a legacy drone now it kind of made it pointless so i may get a mini 2 or mini 3 when that comes out at some point because i do miss having a drone it was really good fun and just gave me a different look um back to the hdr stuff the high, dyna high dynamic range photography, you've got so much dynamic range from the Sony cameras anyway, I rarely even bother um, doing bracketing anymore. Um, you know, you can literally underexpose a little bit and then just boost your shadows and then sort, you know, if your sky's right anyway, it, it's that usable. But you can obviously do either you can do it via bracketing or you can do it manually. A few times, if I do it, I generally just do it manually. I'll just overexpose, underexpose slightly, like three or four shots, and then sort it out later if I need to. But rarely, when you've got 15 stops of dynamic range, you don't really need to worry. Uh, it's just sort of going in between, you know, sort of in between both, really, to get it about right. Um, mobile phones, they take something like 10, 10 shots, I think, and then merge them very quickly. They've already taken the shots before you've even you've even pushed the shutter button. So that's how they do it. It's very, very clever. Very, very clever. But like I say, small sensor, a lot less data to chuck out. So they can literally, and obviously the, the processors in the actual phone themselves are mad. So they've got, they can easily do it, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the Mini 2 is a really good little drone. The thing I, I bought the Air 2 for was because... Hello there. Um, is it Tasca? Um, yeah, I um, Facebook was down. It was down. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know if it was the whole planet or if it was just some places around the world. New Zealand was apparently. Um, the UK was. Um, apparently it's up and running again, but we've just stayed on here. <laughs> apparently it's less... Well, it's a bit more interesting. Um yeah, so the, the drone I had, I bought the Air 2 because it could do 240 frames a second slow motion, which because I love slow motion, it worked. 
Um, so Tasca, do you are you a Sony user or what, what sort of photography are you into? Are you an RX10 man or woman? I don't know. But yeah, the um, the um, DJI Mini Two is an absolute bargain. They're such a good little drone for the money, and they they can fly themselves. They do whatever they you know. They're pretty good nowadays with all the updates they've had. They work really really nicely. So it's funny. I could sit here all night just chatting. I need someone else though. The other side, man. Cool. Nice to nice to chat. Um, so yeah, what sort of um, what camera do you use, and what um, what sort of photography you're into? Do you stranded deep? I have yeah, I have played that actually. I have actually. It's on my. I think I've got it on the PlayStation. Uh, I took a picture of my kids where we were biking, framing done right, and the colours were wow. The Samsung Note Plus two. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, mobile phones are so easy, and that's the whole point of them. You know, they were designed. Oh, right. They had it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't play it. I, I don't really. Unfortunately, I'm so busy doing this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, the, um, yeah, the mobile phones are literally designed for everyone to use very quickly. Just push a button, you get, you know, pretty much an okay shot designed for social media and stuff like that. Um, yeah, they do work very well. And then you use real cameras, and then yeah, there's a huge difference in a lot of the stuff they can do. Yeah, Facebook was down in Egypt, where my friends are, and here in Canada too. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's mad, isn't it? How they can just just shows you though how I bet a lot of people are losing their minds over it. I just always, I just thought, oh, here we go, hacked again or whatever. Um, but they obviously upped the security on youtube because obviously if they thought hacking was happening on facebook or whatever because i had to i literally had to prove myself who i was with codes and stuff three times to even go live it was not not me yeah yes what okay cool <laughs> time lapses on the i did it on the drone actually that was pretty cool um time lapses i have done and if i do do it i quite often just do it with the gopro because i got the hyperlapse it's so easy thanks joseph that's cool um i'll probably go live more it's actually i don't mind this at all i used to be years ago i wish i'd started youtube years ago but then i always think did i have enough knowledge for what i was doing to talk enough rubbish to make the videos to to show my work. I don't know. It, I, I wish I had, because I probably would have been a bit more popular on here or whatever. Not that I really care. You know, at the end of the day, I've got, what, close to 5,000 subscribers now, which is, yeah, it's whatever it is, you know. I don't do it for the, the subscribers. I just did it for memories in the, in the first time, first when I first started it. Still using Fuji XX1, but dropped it and cracked the screen. It's fine. Don't use it often. Remember the ridiculous number of settings. That's the trouble, isn't it? You need to use things regularly. And that's why some people said to me, oh, why didn't you buy the Nick on this or the Canon that? And I said, because I can set up my Sony cameras all the same. So I can literally I can literally pick up the, uh, obviously, bar a couple of buttons. So obviously where the A7R4 has got more custom customization on the buttons and it's got a few extra buttons here or there. Um, and there's a couple of extra bits and pieces of what you can do. But... The RX10 and this are basically set up identical. So all these buttons here, you got me light. All these buttons here, with the, the dial and the buttons here, and you know AEL button and this that, and the other, are all set up the same on all my cameras. So literally, I can just pick one up. Doesn't matter which it is, and I can um, carry on using it. Like you know, it doesn't matter. Um, one of the coolest things, though, I've never bothered putting a screen protector on because the same as the RX10. Your viewfinder sticks out the back far enough, and my Arca Swiss mount, I've got it stuck about a centimeter above my screen. So very rarely, it can't actually touch anything. So even my RX10, which is four years old, didn't even have a scratch on it. 
so that works quite well. Um, it's a shame they don't mount. It's a shame they don't have a built-in Arca Swiss mount on the bodies, rather than having to screw one on. It'd be quite handy. Yeah, oh yeah, time lapses. I have done time lapses. Um, and now you can shoot the time lapses in silent mode, so you're not you not basically going through your shutter mechanism. Um, yeah, Teles Do you know what? I bought a telescope, and it was only a cheap one. Um, the night sky is amazing. I'm quite lucky where I live; it's sort of out in the countryside a bit, and the light pollution isn't too bad. On a clear night, you can see loads of stars. It's absolutely beautiful. And we're watching the um, the shooting stars, you know, like a, from asteroids and stuff. Um, a few months ago, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's the trouble. If you don't use the same camera or set, don't use the same settings, it's very easy to forget how to use, you know, the camera or whatever. And if you don't pick it up enough anyway, you kind of forget. Um, yeah, um, after that. Trouble is, with cheap, you need to uh, you need to put, sort of buy more expensive, yeah, yeah, um, more expensive. But I'd, I'm not I'm not clued up on telescopes, unfortunately. I know I have been to a telescope night as such with a load of photographers, which was quite cool to watch. And they were, I mean, the stuff they had was insane. Makes our photography kit look cheap. Um, you know, full on motorized tracking with laptop plugged into it, and they were looking at stuff. I'm like, what? This is crazy. You know, one bloke had a van, and basically all inside of the van, he just had the telescope outside on his table, and it was just tracking stuff. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, you you need to you need to speak to someone who can advise you on what you might want to buy because I bought a hundred quid one, thinking oh, I might be able to stick my camera on it and it might be all right, but nah, it was terrible. So yeah, very you know it's cheap. Um, so yeah, it, you need to find out what's good. Um, you know, if you want to stick your mobile phone on it to take pictures, which I've seen that actually turns out quite well, um, you can. But you need to, I think, what was the, I think you need a sort of like an F5.6 telescope, which is how big the the aperture of the actual tube is, um, which gives you more light, basically, in into the telescope. I think the one I got was F8. Um, and to be honest, it did give me quite good details through my eyes looking at it but trying to mount a camera on there just didn't didn't work which was a shame really it was a shame um but yeah speak to someone who who might be able to help you with that one because unfortunately i, I couldn't couldn't advise you uh yes the full moon full moon on a clear night be nice to look at with a big telescope wait well actually not too far from me we've got hersman zoo which has actually got one of the one of the big telescopes there, which they do do sort of photography nights and stuff. And they did, I actually spoke to someone uh, a couple of years ago now, and I never did it, which I should have done, was he said, yeah, bring your camera down, we'll put it on, onto one of the big, big scientific telescopes, you know, from, you know, major ones. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It would be cool, well cool to get some shots like that, you know. Um, this is one reason I bought the A7RA, because I basically wanted to see what's going on compared to my original A7R4, because the autofocus system just seems not to be quite 100% right. Not all the time, but sometimes you just think, why can't I get the shot? You know, and I know I've got enough knowledge that I know what I'm doing. It just seemed to be that there's something going on. And I've got a couple of friends who've got the A7R4, and at the same time, they, they have a similar issue. So... There obviously is still a few small issues out there with some of the A7R4s, especially the the older ones, like the ones of the new the ones that first came out, which is what mine was. So you know, um, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's just yeah. Um, photography itself, I think, is such a. A lot of people say photography is dead, but I think. You know, if it was, they would still, they wouldn't be making the cameras they are today. And people think the mobile phone is going to give you as good shots. I use my mobile phone all the time for behind the scenes, quick snaps, because they are a good, a good little camera at the end of the day. 
but you know you haven't got a 600 mil f4 or a 100 or 400 fast autofocus lens that can basically lock onto things and basically keep up with something that's flying super fast or or whatever that that can keep up so there's all that sort of side of things that come into play with proper cameras and the ergonomics as well and people moan about the sony ergonomics but i haven't got a problem with this at all i think it's absolutely fine you know people say oh your hand falls off the bottom my hands are not massive but they're not small i don't end up doing that all the time i hold it like that no trouble at all fits in my hands absolutely fine obviously if you have got bigger hands that could be an issue but i don't so uh oh, oh sorry uh no worse oh yes you would get lots of views post some pics of of the moon through the telescope yeah i, I might contact them again because i still got, i think i've still got the guy's contact details super super fast is stable if attached to the big well yeah it's on a massive i miss huge um huge buildings with a big dome on it and it opens up and that literally just follows just tracks with the planet or the planet moves and it, it moves opposite the direction doesn't it to stay perfectly in line with the uh, thing it's mad absolutely crazy how it's um how it works which is really cool really cool um but yeah that's a that's a different that's a different level of imagery there um i've seen some I have a couple of friends of mine who have done some amazing uh low light stuff with with a you know a um pretty good telescope with a tracker on it uh, but i'm like that's just another few grand that i'm not going to spend because for me it wouldn't be it wouldn't be worthwhile because I wouldn't use it enough or make it make use of it enough, you know. Because I actually looked at you know, we were talking about the A one earlier, the fact that it was six and a half grand. I was actually looking at the other side of it, as in medium format. The problem with the medium formats are that they're nowhere near as quick, so they they're designed to be you know, for portraiture or, or um, uh, landscape and and uh, products and stuff like that. They work really well for that. But you haven't got 10 frames a second. You haven't got, um, you know, yeah, you do get I also focus on now, but, you know, it, they don't work as quick, you know, and that's the difference. You know, the sensors are massive and the data coming off them is huge. And then it's again of, you know, upgrade your computer to run this thing. <laughs> and then upgrade a computer again to run a medium format, um, especially for doing loads of work. So, yeah, because um, so I actually looked at the Fuji, was it the 100? What's it called? Uh, new one. Uh, yeah, the Fuji Film GFX 100S. I think that's the new one. Um, four, five and a half grand, which I thought that's really cool. But then you've got to change your lenses, so that would become more expensive. And you couldn't just buy one lens, so that would be even more expensive. And then your lighting, yeah, that'd be fine. But yeah, for the average people, people like me, you you know, do a lot of photography um 35 mil full frame is absolutely brilliant really and it gives us such a scope of what we can do um it's really nice to be able to do so you know and not hugely expensive but I mean, you can go as expensive as you like really um so i took what was it 30 30 shots at a minute each one on um, on a time lapse basically and it was at 49% it was down to 32 that ain't too bad on battery use so basically it was just on um, which is cool so um, any more questions before I call it a night because it's now 20 past 12 in the UK not that I'm tired. It just I sh I could should probably go because I'll be in here all night. Otherwise, but I need to re research in doing live streaming with another photographer. That'd be quite cool to do. 
Um, we can just talk about cameras and, and things, answer questions with different experiences. I think that'd be quite fun. Otherwise, I'm just talking to myself, which I suppose I'm kind of used to doing with the videos most of the time. Um, but yeah, not been going, we've been going for one hour, 20 minutes, so that's not too bad. I think what I'll do is I'll schedule a live next time. And if anybody, what I'll do is I'll schedule it a few days beforehand and then people can ask some questions and uh, you know put the comments up first and then I can, gives me an idea of what people would like to know about and talk about, which would be quite, quite fun. And hopefully help some people. If anybody's got any questions about, um, you know, wanting to learn things or particular settings that I might use that I know work or, you know, if you want to learn a bit more about using manual compared to being an auto and things like that, there's a lot of a lot of scope. These cameras are they're a minefield of technology and settings and stuff. So, you know, hopefully by next week, hopefully this week, should I say. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, digital back would be good. Moving foot picture quality is great, but every time I go out, I'd rather have a compact camera. That's the trouble, isn't it? They're big. Um, you know, and to be honest, sensor technology has come a long way, even up to five years ago. So, you know, most of the cameras out there are plenty, plenty good enough for us, you know. I did do actually with um, a friend Andrew, we did a photo shoot using a hundred year old medium format. Actually, it might be full, is it full format or medium format? Can't remember now. Um, but that's a really interesting video. I think it's in my. Uh, can I, I wonder if I can put the link in the chat. Oh, we go. Hundred years of photography. So there's, ah, there's a part one and part two. Oh, that's part two. Where's part one? Where's part one? Ah, oh, part. Part one. That's part one. So basically, we compared an old school video there you go that's the link um an old school video oh sorry old school camera a zeiss something or other icon i think it's called um 100 year old camera versus modern day technology and how easy we have it compared to back then it was really really interesting the twilight zone um so yeah, it was it was really interesting on how how the old camera had no viewfinder as such. We had to pretty much guess on the distance and everything like that. And obviously the film speed was whatever it was. Um we tried to match the um the settings on the on the uh, digital camera to kind of get roughly what the uh, media format was. But it was really interesting actually. So it's part one and part two. Um yeah, thanks, thanks for watching and thanks for asking questions and things. It's just, a, I like having lighthearted chats. You know, I'm going to learn from people on here, not just um, me teaching people on here because I don't know everything. I'm sure people on here that will be saying, oh, Stu, you probably don't even know that or you might not know that, but this is this is the real reason. I'll be like, yeah, I didn't know it. So, you know, there's, there's plenty of stuff out there that I don't know. I don't really read very much, so... Everything I know is because of what I've practiced over the years and messing around, experimenting. And I think that's a lot of a lot of people's misconceptions of the real world of photography today is that they expect it to be like a mobile phone camera, like one push of the button and it does everything for you. And when you pick up one of these for the first time and stick it in manual, it's suddenly a different world. Um, and I get asked questions daily. How do you do this? How do you do that? I'm, you know, practice. We, they cost nothing to do. It's not like we have to put film in them nowadays you can see your you can see your mistakes or when you get it right in camera so you know it's a huge a huge difference really in what i i started with when i was scared to take a photo just in case i got it wrong but actually you know you sort of started off um you know talking and taking photos getting loads of mistakes and it cost you you know i don't know three or four pounds for a for a lens back then and and three or four pounds to get it developed. And then you get the pictures back and go, well, one out of 24 are good. <laughs> Sometimes none were good. 
you know, and it was a learning curve because you could never see what you took, you know, especially when you started messing around doing double exposures and things. It was quite, quite fun. Uh, I was very lucky that I was working for a company who saw one of the owners saw me taking photos one afternoon when I was just on a break or whatever. And he said, you just snapping around, you know, walking. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, I'll tell you, this is back early 2000. No, actually, was it? Yeah, late, late 90s into 2000, that sort of era. And he said to me, well, if you keep snapping the shots and stuff, keeping you know, sort of try and keep it business like, we'll just pay for your your film and processing. I was like, what, all of it? And he went, yeah. So I was very lucky that I could basically order a load of film and just take as many shots as I wanted, and they would be processed and printed if I wanted to print them or whatever. So I had a, a good few years of free free photography, basically, which was really good. Um, you know, I was highly appreciative of that as well. Uh, managed to capture some cool stuff, especially when I started using slide film as well. That was that was quite cool. Um, because when you had, one benefit that was you didn't actually have to print them to kind of see if they're any good or not. You could literally just look at them through a, um, a monocular viewer um, with a bit of backlight. It, it kind of showed you if it was sharp or whatever. It was quite good. Uh, so that was that was quite cool. Anyway, I'm going to call it a night. It's been an hour and a half almost now. So thanks for everyone for coming along. I just thought I'd do it because, one, it's a little bit different and it's not TikTok. <laughs> and the fact that we had no Facebook or Instagram to play with tonight. So I thought, well, I could either edit a video, put it together, or just come on live and just have a chat to everyone. So hopefully, um, you know, it's been a little bit interesting. But feel free to ask questions and stuff like that. Or put, you know, ask other people questions on here. It's no... I just want to be a light-hearted talk, really, and just get on with everyone and, you know, find out what they do and, you know, what you sort of enjoy doing or if there's anything you'd like to be better at. Um, you know, I'm far from perfect, I know, you know. TikTok is, is a trap, yeah. <laughs> well, you start off watching one little video, don't you, and then three hours later, what the hell, what, what happened? Where did the time go? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's weird, but um, that's one place I I have got a little. I've got five hundred followers or something on there, but you know, do I start going live on there when I get another five hundred on top? I don't know. I suppose it's a good bit of possibly trying to get pull people over here to get more views and more subscribers or whatever. I'm not really bothered about how many subscribers I've got. It's more the fact that it's just nice to be able to document what I do because. One of the reasons why I started the YouTube in the first place was obviously memories. And two, you know, if we look at it, you know, if we grab a hard drive, you might have, I don't know, 100,000 pictures on there that just sat there doing nothing. You know, the fact that you can literally set a video up with a load of your photos and a, and a day out, that's why I did it. You know, so if I go out with a camera and I talk about this, that and the other, it's just a memory for me. You know, I know some people might find it interesting. It may it may even help people to learn a little bit about photography or whatever. Um, but it's more the fact that I can watch it back at any time and go, oh, that was really fun. You know, I'm glad we did that or glad I took those pictures. And, you know, I haven't got to try and find them on a hard drive um, or on my website or whatever. So, you know, it's that's what it was about for me anyway. Now the fact that I'm earning money on it on here a little bit, not a huge amount, but it's enough to pay towards things, which is really nice too. So thank you everyone who's subscribed and watched the videos because it gives me a bit of pocket money. Um, have a great night. Looking forward to see. Yeah. Um, I, I looked earlier. I think the moon wasn't coming up till some silly o'clock. It was really low. I think it's below the horizon at the moment. So I'll have to wait. Plus it's been raining all day and we sent the other. So, um, But yeah, there'll be some new videos up soon. I've got about four. I think there's a couple of RX-10 ones I still haven't even done. So there'll be older ones if they pop up soon with a couple of um, bits with that, the RX-10. Uh, yeah, that'd be really cool. If I can get hold of someone and ask if I can actually do it, it'd be really cool. But I don't know if they've still got the telescope there because something's in my head going, they moved it. I might be wrong. They've probably still got something. If not, I do have a friend who has got one. So it could be quite cool to try some moon shots with his one anyway so we shall, we shall see how it goes um but yeah thanks everyone for watching and um i shall see you soon
good night to everyone.